I guess it was Thursday, we finished up this uh, example where we, we took cosine um, of arc sine of x minus arc tangent of y or, or, or sine inverse, tangent inverse, how you want to say those things. Um, and we started to use our identities. Uh, we drew some pictures and, and converted that thing to this. Okay. Um, and, and this, I just wanted to show this. I, I put it in the video after you guys left. But I think it's a benefit for us to look at together. Um, if I graph both these in GeoGebra, uh, we see that neither of them are uh, being graphed. And, and the idea of the reason is because this is a multivariable function. Okay? Uh, so utility 3 doesn't do this. I don't think, I haven't messed around with Desmos enough to see if it, if it deals with this uh, or will graph this. The idea is if I plug in an x value, one variable, plug in a y value, a second variable, equate that, evaluate that, it's going to give me a third value, right? Okay, well, if I'm going to plot that third value in reference to these two values, now I have a third dimension. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's why we're not seeing here anything being graphed because this is a two-dimensional surface. So if I open up the three-dimensional aspect of this, okay, um, we see that we get that surface. Um, now we can kind of zoom out and all that kind of stuff. So it, once it starts showing that kind of initial behavior, um, get back to a standard view here. It just keeps showing that behavior beyond, um, you know, negative three and positive three on that on that green axis. Um, but the, the green one is that surface, which is uh, what we started with, and we transformed it into that red one, which are the same surface, right? Okay, so it tells us that these are equal. Uh, but what's the benefit of this? The benefit is if I know, like, x is, you know, like pi over um, 3, and y is pi over 6, okay, uh, and, and I evaluate that. Let's see, where did that go? Maybe it didn't. Let's see here. Oh, it's, it's not, I don't think it's going to because uh, pi over 3 is bigger than 1, correct? And then down here when I have 1 minus that squared, it's going to be um, an undefined value. Okay, uh, so the domain of this thing, um, let's make this pi over 6, and let's make this one pi over 3. The tangent can be anything, but this number has to be between, uh, the arc sign has to be between um, 1 and negative 1 there. So we get that green plane, okay, which is just evaluating this. It's saying, okay, what is the arc sign of pi over 6? What is the arc tangent of pi over 3? We're going to evaluate those, subtract them, and then evaluate cosine of that. And when we do that, um, we're getting, uh, let's see here, let me just put a point on that plane and see. Okay, so it's giving me, um, let's see here, that point 0.97 is this evaluated. Okay. Um, that being said, then, can, can I get the same thing when I plug in x to be pi over 6 here and y to be pi over 3? So let's go. Uh, take this as pi over 6 times this to be pi over 3. We'll make this pi over 6. And then make this pi over 3. Evaluate. And we see that the red plane then was the same as that green plane, right? Okay. Now, why, why are we doing this? Why is this useful? If I had, like, you know, two, three, four, five different things I had to evaluate, different angles, pi over 6, pi over 3, we had pi over 4 and pi over 3. Maybe I had, um, you know, pi over 3 and pi over 3, or pi over 6 and pi over 6. I had multiple x's and y's that I had to evaluate that original green uh, expression for. Okay? That could be problematic because I have to have good knowledge about my unit circle, right? I have to know my inverse uh, ratios and be able to uh, evaluate those. And once I evaluate those and get two angles, subtract those two angles, and then evaluate that difference for the cosine. 
I gotta have a lot of knowledge about my unit circle. That red one, do I need any knowledge about my unit circle? No, there's no sine, cosine, or tangent, or their inverses stuck in that red expression. Okay? Uh, now we did have to know some unit circle stuff to get that red expression, but then when I want to evaluate three, four, five different problems with this vari that are very sim the same, just varying the x's and y's, I can do that pretty quickly. Does that make sense? Okay. So that, that might be the payoff or the benefit of being able to use our identities like we are um, to transform uh, essentially a trigonometric function okay, down to something that uh, has zero trigonometric ratios written in it. Okay. Um, and, and like I said, this, this here is the reason uh, if I were to put a number, let's just put like two here. Okay. Oh, put the wrong spot. Two there. One minus four. Okay. Uh, we see that nothing red plotted, right? What's one minus four? Negative three, right? Square root of negative three is I radical three, correct? You cannot graph that. Okay. At least at this moment, we cannot graph that. Okay. That's what talking about polar coordinates and um, vectors will allow us to do eventually. Okay. But um, that's why this number here, if we look at 1 minus, it's x squared. Um, that thing has to be greater than 1 minus x squared has to be greater than or equal to 0, meaning then that 1 has to be greater than or equal to x squared. Okay. Now we have a um, nonlinear inequality that we have to solve, and essentially it's going to say that we have to be between negative 1 and 1 uh, for that input value, which that input value then was your x. So that number right there has to be between um, 1 and negative 1. That's why pi over 3 didn't work uh, when I clicked over x. Um, all right, so that's all great and, and awesome. Let's, let's continue to work with. Uh, the sum and difference formulas. Let's, this is another, this is actually, this probably, I should probably put this one first, this example, before we did that one. This is more of a specific scenario, specific case. This was a generic case where we had x and y. Uh, this is more specific where now our x is a known value and our y is a known value. Uh, but if I start to try to mimic the, the procedure that we went through um, on that last example, remember when they say cosine inverse or arc cosine or tangent inverse or arc tangent when they say that they're telling you they're implying an angle does that make sense okay they're hiding that angle from us so let's just make the assumption that everything is in quadrant one here um in quadrant one what is the inverse cosine of radical two over two what angle is paired up with radical two over two for cosine 45. Pi, yeah, okay, so you said pi or four, that's fine. Um, if you want to do it in radians, that's fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the statement that it's probably more difficult to do it in radians than degrees, and, and we, can, we, can, we can do either one, but I'm going I'm to use 45 instead. I think every time that you're using these sum and difference formulas, you're probably going to want to do it in degrees, um, just for the mere fact of how we add fractions and have to have common denominators and that kind of stuff. Um, so 45, and then what... Maybe you don't have this memorized off the unit circle, okay? But if I'm looking at the first quadrant, look at 30 degrees, that's a radical 3 or 2 comma 1 half, right? Well, tangent is sine divided by cosine, so tangent should be 1 half divided by radical 3 or 2. Well, when I divide that, it gives me 1 over radical 3. Is that radical 3? No. Okay, it's 1 over that. It's the reciprocal of that. So, what angle in the first quadrant do you think will give you radical 3? 60. Because when I put 60 there, when I go 60 degrees, these two things flip-flop, right? So that makes this fraction then flip-flop. So it becomes radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. And that just gives me radical 3. So, that becomes 60. Okay. Um, so now... If we've got that to be sine of 45 plus 60, you're not going to want to condense that to 105. 
Because does anybody know anything about the unit circle at 105? No. So we leave it as sine 45 plus sine, or sorry, sine of 45 plus 60. Rewrite that then using your sum formulas. So it becomes sum of, or sorry, sine of 45, cosine of 60, plus cosine of 45, sine of 60. Do you know all those values off the unit circle? What's the sine of 45? Sine of 2 or 2. Cosine of 60. I'm oh, sorry, 1 half, isn't it? 1 half. And cosine of 45. Radical 2 or 2. Sine of 60. Radical 3 or 2. So that's going to eventually give me radical 2 over 4 plus radical 6 over 4, right? And then all you've got to do, if you want to check to make sure that is accurate, okay, just either Desmos or GeoGebra, it doesn't matter which one you use here. You can even use your TIA 384, just more kind of complicated to type in uh, on those. But if I type in sine of uh, arc cosine of uh, square root of 2, divided by 2 plus arc tangent of square root of 3 evaluate gives me that number right there 0.97 so we're going to see then does square root of 2 plus square root uh, 6 divided by 4 give me the same number. There you go. Okay. Um, so, we converted this thing from using trigonometric expressions, trigonometric ratios, and converted it down to, um, you know, just a, a sum of ultimately irrational values. Is that something we can do? All right. Um, all right, so that that finishes up section 7.2. Um, but when we start learning 7.3's information, 7.3's information comes from those formulas, those sum and difference formulas from 7.2. Okay? So these are what we refer to as our double angle formulas. Uh, today and tomorrow we'll talk about double angle, half angle, outer reducing formulas, uh, and uh, maybe the next day, I think maybe Thursday, we'll talk about um, the sum of the product of the product of some point. Um, which are all things that kind of really the reason for these first three to four sections of chapter seven are to allow us to uh, recognize some nice substitutions that may occur um, when we're solving equations. If we're to look at the, the last I think three sections of this chapter, it's dealing with solving trigonometric equations, okay? Uh, which is really what we've been working toward now for almost you know, three or four weeks, okay? Um, and these are just uh, a series of identities that are gonna make that process maybe a little bit easier for us. If you look at these, um, kind of the, uh, task at hand or, or the, the necessity or the use of uh, these formulas is that if we look at the left hand side where it says sine of 2x, okay, um, normally everything we've done so far has been sine or cosine of 1x. Our argument has been um, or had a coefficient of 1. Now it's double x, okay. Well that can be sometimes messy to deal with in regards to solving equations and some of the other things that we want to do. Uh, so, if we look at the right-hand side of all of those equations up there, all those identities, they're all written in terms of 1x, right? Okay. Every argument on the left is 2x. Every argument on the right is 1x. Now, the ones on the right, they might be, you know, there are multiple 1x's over there, but it might be a, um, 
a simpler task when we know what x is, okay, to deal with the expressions on the right-hand side of the equation than it may be with the, the stuff on the left-hand side, okay? Uh, so this, this will take a multiple, um, uh, essentially of two, so this would be 4x, this would be 6x, 8x, all that kind of stuff, and it uh, simplifies it down, okay, to um, a 1x idea on the right-hand side. Does that make sense? Uh, so, when you are seeing any expression, whether you're proving identity, you're solving the equation, whatever, if the argument is a 2x, these things should kind of pop into your brain. Okay? Um, and, and you're probably going to maybe 95% of the time want to, to use one of these things. Okay? Um, so, can I talk about the benefit of these, where we use them? Let, and let's use an example that is um, an already known proven fact. We already know, uh, let's say that we deal with the uh, cos. Let's do sine first. Let's do sine of 60. Do you guys already know what that is? Radical 3 or 2, right? Okay. That's an already previously known fact. Okay. Let's see if we can arrive at the same fact using this uh, identity. Okay. Can we say sine of 60? How can you rewrite that so it's 2 times something? 2 times 30. Okay. So this 30 okay, is that x and that x. Did you guys agree with that? Okay, so let's rewrite this as 2 sine of 2 times 30. It's, sin, it's 2 times sine of 30 cosine of 30. What's the benefit of this? It's now telling me a larger angle by knowing information. I know a lot, I have to have a lot of information. I got to know both sine and cosine of that smaller angle 30. Okay, what's sine of 30? One half. What's cosine of 30? Radical 3 or 2. What's 1 half times 2? 1. 1 times radical 3 or 2? Radical 3 or 2. Is that the same thing that we already knew to be a fact? So that's kind of a visual. That's a proof maybe uh, with that specific value of 60 uh, to show that this formula does work. Okay. Um, now it's only one specific value, so... Um, maybe we'd like to have a formula or, a, I guess, a, a, a formula-based proof um, not using specific values like 60. Uh, but we could do the same thing with, uh, you know, say 90. Okay, sine of 90 is what? It's 1, right? Okay. Well, if I say that 90 is the same thing as 2 times 45, and now I have 2. Sine of 45, cosine of 45, okay? What's sine of 45? Radical 2 or 2. What's cosine of 45? Radical 2 or 2. And I still got this 2 out in front. Okay, so what's radical 2 times radical 2? 2, right? So those numerators give me 2 multiplied by this 2 outside. Gives me 4 up top, right? And then I take all my denominators. 1 times 2 times 2 is 4. Does it give you 1? Is that what we know sine of 90 is? Yeah. Okay. And you can do that with anything. You can do that with, uh, you know, once I know the sine of 60 was bracket 3 or 2, then I can use that formula sine x cosine x to find uh, sine of 1 point. I can use that information to find sine of 240 then. Um, now that I know sine of 90, I can use that information to find sine of 80 or 180, sine of um, 360, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? All right, so this is all this is the reason we call them double angles. Um, now let's talk about why this proof exists or why this uh, identity exists through the use of a proof. Okay, uh, Because just showing that relationship with just some arbitrary values like 60 and, and, and 45 or 60 and 90, uh, those might just be coincidence. Those might be the only two that ever work. 
we need a proof to show that it works regardless of what x is. Okay? So in those two examples, x was 30 and x was 45, right? Maybe those are the only two times that this, this ever works. So we want to show that x can be arbitrary, it can be anything it wants to be, and this will work. Okay? So here's, here's the approach that we use. Um, do you guys agree that sine, and I'm just going to write this um, just to help us remember uh, what this formula was. Uh, so we know sine of alpha plus beta was sine of alpha cosine beta uh, plus cosine alpha sine beta, right? That's just the, the sum and difference. We used, I think, S and T in the original um, lesson, okay? But you can use whatever you want to use, okay? Um, what happens if I make beta the same thing as alpha? So what happens if I have, I'll do this in a different color, sine of alpha plus alpha. This would be still sine of alpha, right? These two things are the same. But now everywhere I saw beta up here, I should replace it with alpha. Okay. Now, just think about this. Move some stuff over here. What's sine of alpha plus alpha? What's another way I could write that? Sine of 2 alpha. So working this way, we now have that double angle, right? So we take a double angle, rewrite it as a sum of two things, okay? Because that can always be done, right? Now I use our um, sum and difference formulas. And that then is going to equate to this term here is the exact same as that one, right? So add their coefficients. I get 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. Okay. Now in the formulas we're using x, but it doesn't matter what your variable is. We now see a sine of 2 alpha, a sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine alpha cosine alpha, or 2 sine x cosine x, whatever variable we're using. Does that make sense? So that is a general proof for any value alpha that you ever want to deal with, okay? Whether it be 30 or 45 or, you know, 22.5, okay? Um, really nice. Doable? Okay. Um, so where do these other ones come from? Where does cosine of 2x come from? Well, cos and now there's three of them here, and we'll talk about why there's three of them. Um, but if we want to prove the formulas for cosine of 2x, um, would you guys agree? Let's just start off with the same kind of logic. Cosine of 2x, that's the same thing as cosine of x plus x, right? Now using your sum and difference formulas for cosine, this becomes uh, cosine x, cosine x. So it's always cosine of first angle plus cosine of second angle. And then whatever this sign is, remember we use the opposite. And that becomes sine of the first angle, sine of the second angle. Is that okay? What's cosine x, cosine x? Cosine squared x. What's sine x, sine x? Sine squared x. So there is your fundamental identity. And I say fundamental because it's the first one you kind of think about, the first one you would come up with through this proof um, for the cosine. Okay. Uh, now, what's kind of a, a drawback of this? If I want to know what cosine of 2x is, I need to know what cosine and sine of 1x is, right? Okay. I don't know. I arranged one black. Never seen this before. It's 
Anybody ever seen that cursor? Oh, it's back. <laughs> Maybe it's back. Um, so, if, if I wanted to do, say, uh, if, if it's unavoidable in the sine of 2x, uh, it was unavoidable in the previous example, um, but if I wanted to say cosine, still have an error here, cosine of 60, Cosine of 60, knowing that that is, you don't have to write this down, cosine of 2 times 30. Well, now I need to know, so that's the cosine squared of 30 minus the sine squared of 30, right? So in, in evaluating cosine of 60, I need to know the cosine of a smaller angle and the sine of the smaller angle. We should have the ability to work through this and say, okay, if I want to know the cosine of 60, maybe all I need to know is the cosine of 30. So let's see if we can work this out. Let's say, um, and, and this, these additional two identities stem from knowing your Pythagorean identity that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1, right? Can I solve for sine squared x and say that sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. Does that make sense, everybody? So now come down here, and wherever I see sine squared x, replace it with 1 minus cosine squared. So this will give me cosine squared x minus, now I'm going to put a quantity in here, so you guys, this is where uh, some people make a mistake is they forget that you're subtracting a, a quantity. So this becomes now cosine squared x minus 1 uh, plus cosine squared x. So total, that gives me two cosine squared x's, right? Minus one. So now we have a second version or a second identity for the cosine double angle. Okay. The benefit of that, it doesn't have sine in it anymore, right? Okay. So we can now maybe find cosine of 60 just as two cosine of 30 squared minus then one. I didn't have to deal with the, the sine of 30. Is that okay? All right. That becomes something that maybe in, inside an equation is, is beneficial to us. Um, but there's other substitutions that we can make. We made the substitution for sine squared, but can I make a substitution for cosine squared? Isn't cosine squared x the same as 1 minus sine squared x? So let's make that substitution. So let's go with cosine of 2x. Originally is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. And now I'm going to make this substitution. So this becomes 1 minus sine squared x minus then sine squared x. So there's some more like terms. You get 1 minus 2 sine squared x, right? And there's another version of your cosine double angle. Okay? So you got three versions of your cosine double angle. Okay. Uh, you've got to pay attention to like directions. Uh, the directions might say leave your answer in terms of cosine. It's only cosine. So that might try to maybe you may make you not use cosine squared x minus sine squared x. It might uh, direct you away from using one minus two sine squared x. Okay? Um, if it doesn't say there's any one you want to, okay? Uh, maybe sometimes based off of preliminary information. Maybe they want me to find um, cosine of 
some obscure angle, uh, let's say, let's think about this, let's say they say, uh, find cosine of 2x. If cosine of 1x is equal to like 2 thirds, okay? Does it make sense to you that I would probably want to use everything froze again? Alright, does it make sense to you that I would probably want to use this identity here? Because I already know what cosine of 1x is. Does that make sense? So I would just square this. Okay, give me what? 4 ninths. Multiply it by 2, so you get 8 ninths. Subtract 1 from it. 8 ninths minus 1 is negative 1 ninth, right? Okay. Um, so I can evaluate cosine of 2x knowing cosine of 1x pretty quickly with this one. If I use this one, if I know cosine of x is 2 thirds, using this one, I need to know a couple things. I need to know what uh, quadrant was x in, and then I need to know what the sine is, so I'd have to draw all the pictures. That kind of makes sense? And to find that opposite side, um, so I could do the sine of, of this x. So these varying versions are useful in regards to maybe what you're provided with at the onset of a problem. Okay. So let's do... Um, for examples of this. Uh, I, actually, before we do that, let's, let's prove the tangent. Tangent's easy as well. So if I wanted to prove the tangent. Okay, you guys know that the tangent of uh, like alpha plus beta, and we haven't dealt with this a lot, um, but it becomes tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta, and then it's 1 minus tangent alpha tangent beta, right? Okay. Uh, now, if Alright, so if, if that's the case, let's, let's make alpha equal to beta. So if alpha is the same thing as beta, can I do this? That make sense? So now up here, wherever I saw a beta, can I do that? Can I do that? And now what's the top going to give me? Two tangent alphas. What's the bottom going to give me? And now this side here would be the tangent of two alphas. And there's your um, double angle for tangent. Um, these are, I think, maybe some of our easier identities to prove because they're just using direct substitutions, right? Uh, if you remember, like, proving the cosine sum and difference formulas, we had to have that in the circle picture. We had to put four points on there. Uh, we have to use arcs and, and recognize that the forward for uh, arcs are zero themselves. Go through the distance formula. And there's a very messy proof to get those formulas, to right? get those identities. Here, it's just direct substitution and uh, doing some algebra. Right. Um, all right, so a lot of times, guys, we, we neglect in, in a trig class. Um, maybe necessarily dealing with the, the formulas for tangent a lot of times, because if we focus a lot on sine and cosine, don't we have then the, the tools to develop tangent just through division of those? Okay. Uh, so as you go through homework question, you think, man, I'm doing a lot of cosines, a lot of, a lot of sines, and I haven't done a whole lot of tangents. Uh, that, that might be the kind of mindset uh, of the author of the, of the questions is that, if you know the relationship between sine and cosine and how they provide you tangent, you can do varying amounts of sine and cosine questions. You should be able to do tangent questions uh, with little difficulty. Uh, all right. So we want to rewrite cosine 3x in terms of cosine x. 
Okay. Uh, so the goal here is just to have cosine left over uh, when we're done. Okay. And we can we can kind of vary this. Uh, if I if I didn't have in the last class I I missed this. I didn't read it all the way through. Um, if I got rid of that and I just said rewrite cosine three x. Okay. You have absolutely no guidance there. You can do it in multiple ways. Okay. Um, but let's rewrite this so it's just in terms of cosine. What we need to understand is it doesn't really matter what that number is, okay? Um, because we're going to try to rewrite this as a sum. And when we rewrite it as sums, hopefully we develop um, double angles and singular angles, okay? Uh, so you can think about if, if this was 3x, that can be rewritten as cosine of 2x plus x, correct? If it was 4x, it could be rewritten as cosine 2x plus 2x, right? If it was 5x, it could be cosine 2x plus 3x. And then that 3x can eventually be written as x plus 2x, right? Okay. Um, so, and maybe if we have time, I don't know if we will, we can see, you know, how would I deal with this if it was 5x? It gets, it gets a little bit lengthier, a little bit messier, but if you can do cosine of 3x, you should be able to do cosine of... 5x, 7x, 9x, 11x, any odd multiple, okay? Because the, the pattern is really the same. We're going to first use the sum formulas. So it's going to rewrite as cosine 2x, cosine 1x. It's cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle. And then it becomes minus sine of the first angle, sine of the second okay now we we want it in terms of cosine of 1x so we need to get rid of that thing and we need to get rid of both of these things through substitution right so let's look at this one let's take cosine of 2x was there a formula for cosine of 2x that just dealt with cosine of 1x. We go back to our three identities. Wasn't 2 cosine squared x? Was it minus 1? Awesome. Maybe leaving my computer in my car all weekend was a bad idea. There we go. All right, so does everybody agree that this cosine of 2x, this was one of our three identities for cosine double angle, right? Okay. Um, I now have the cosine of x that's already out there. Okay. Now I only have one option for sine of 2x. It is 2 sine squared x. I, actually, I, I was kind of going, I was doing two steps at once. So this thing here. Is going to evaluate to 2 sine x, cosine x, right? But then I've also got that final sine x being multiplied through. So now I've got, just doing this algebra, be 2 cosine cubed x minus cosine of x minus 2 sine squared x cosine x. Agree with that? I need to not get rid of that thing because it's not cosine, right? So what is sine squared the same thing as in regards to cosine? 
1 minus cosine squared. So I'll make that substitution. So it becomes 2 cosine cubed x minus cosine x minus um, 2 cosine x plus 2 cosine cubed x. Multiplying, basically what it is, I just took 2 cosine x, multiplied it by 1, or negative 2 cosine x, multiplied it by that 1, and then multiplied it by this cosine squared, negative cosine squared. Uh, so now I've got what? 4 cosine cubed x minus 3 cosine x's. And now I have what cosine 3x looks like in terms of 1x. Now, if you wanted to, you could obviously factor out a cosine out of both those on the, on the right hand side. Um, if for some reason that's beneficial, I don't know if it would be. How can we check ourselves? Can I graph the left hand side? Graph the right-hand side. I think this thing's the reason why the computer's being slow. Huh? Desmos probably would have just crashed the universe. <laughs> All right, so we had, uh, well, it's cosine of 3x, right? And we should know that's what that's what the three inside the argument does. Is it gives me a horizontal compression? Let's see if um, what was it four cosine cubed x minus three was it cosine x? Does it give me the same curve? All right, so it shows us. Um, they are e equivalent to one another. Now the the, the payoff or or, or um, cost of, of these things maybe for whatever application we're doing maybe we struggle with having a three in the argument. Well, down here now we don't have threes in the argument anymore, right? They're one x's. That might make things easier for us in some applications. Or we know we can always go the the reverse way. Maybe we don't like this power of three. Okay. So if we don't like that power of three, maybe we'll have tools some at some point that allow us to go backwards and generate this thing. So now you don't have powers anymore, but you have a multiple angle now. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so there are identities that allow us to go, you know, uh, from larger powers, like three, four, five, and reduce them down to first power. Okay? And that's kind of what we'll kind of spend some time on dealing with. Uh, the next couple days as well. But in, in, the, in the process of checking whether we've correctly done a problem, quickly graph cosine uh, and see if they are the same graph. Um, tomorrow we'll talk about double angle, oh, sorry, uh, half angle, which we start with the double angle formula to uh, generate the, the half angle formula. And then we'll uh, maybe talk about power reducing formula. Uh, I'm going to open up an assignment, and uh, we'll have a sign uh, be due towards the end of the week by Friday.